space fans. Chelsea Goad here. I'm here with former NASA astronaut Mike Massimino. We are here on board the Intrepid and we're here to talk about Hubble. So, Mike, it's been 30 years. <laughs> um, for 30 years. Well, I wasn't there in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. lot older than 30, but uh, yeah, it's been 30 years. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about kind of Hubble itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hubble has really changed our whole perception of the universe and, and how we view the cosmos around us. I'm curious, in your opinion, what are some of Hubble's greatest achievements? Um, it's, I think there is a certain set of things that Hubble uh, was looking for, the astronomers were looking for, and Hubble came up with answers. Things like, uh, do black holes exist? Yes, they exist, and Hubble found them. And, and it was, are there, another question was, are there planets in other solar systems? And people thought there were, but Hubble found them. There was lots of them, right? So there were things they were looking for that Hubble found. Um, I think that some of the things that were, I think are even a little bit more interesting maybe, were things that they didn't even know to look for that Hubble discovered. The, uh, the discovery of dark energy and dark matter. In the case of dark energy, it resulted in a, the awarding of a Nobel Prize. And what, what that was is they, the astronomers, were looking to try to um, characterize the expansion rate of the universe. So. We know that the, there was this Big Bang was the theory, you know, that we're pretty sure that that's what happened, the Big Bang. And then things were out thrown out there and that the universe is expanding. But you would think that it was expanding or anyone would pretty much think that it's expanding at a decelerating rate. Just like when you throw something across a room, you throw a ball or your set of keys or whatever it is, they're going to eventually slow down and land, right? Things will get slower. Um, and that's what they thought. So they were just trying to characterize, measure that, that deceleration. And what they found was is that it's not decelerating at all, it's actually accelerating. So as if you threw a ball at a certain speed and instead of slowing down and, and hitting the ground, it, it actually picked up speed and accelerated. So I didn't know what that is and they, they characterize that as dark energy. We don't know what it is, which is, we know, but still they got the Nobel Prize just for figuring out that it's there. So that's kind of cool. So I think things like that, I think usually a, a scientific instrument, a really good one like Hubble, I think the best one ever actually, uh, is able to not just answer questions but create questions as well and then i think maybe in my opinion the coolest thing it just takes us places we can only dream about going and shows us the beauty of the universe that's out there it's just beautiful yeah. and it's brought that beauty to the world to, so people can enjoy it the beauty of the universe speaking about the beauty of the universe and kind of how hubble opened our eyes to that i'm curious if you have any favorite images that Hubble's taken over the years? Yes. Anything that really stands out? My uh, favorite for my first flight, for my second flight, they're, they're based on early release images. So okay. there's a lot of really cool images that I like a lot, but my favorites are the ones that they took soon after we worked on it because yeah. it showed that we didn't break the telescope. <laughs> we the, did it. So for example, oh. the Cone Nebula, which is really cool, it's a birthplace for stars, that came out soon after uh, my first flight the advanced camera for surveys, which uh, I helped to install and hooked it up on my first flight. No pressure. And you think it did, <laughs> well, you think it did the job right, right? Okay, I think this is working, okay. but you're never really gonna know for a while because you have to get away from the spacecraft and from away from the from the, from the Hubble. And then you have to, they turn things on kind of slowly. They don't like, okay, let's get a picture tomorrow. They kind of have to warm it back up after we start. So it takes, you know, about a month or so at least wow. before they can start really observing with it again. And so it's a while for those images to come down. Is that a little bit of down. a tense period of time? Well, you try not to think. There's other it. things going on. You know, you're back yeah. on Earth and you got to go to the grocery store and stuff like that yeah. takes up yeah. your time. But uh, so I really wasn't obsessing about it. And I, I was pretty confident we did a good job. But then when you see those beautiful images, that was, uh, that, that's my favorite one. My, fa my, uh, my other favorite one, maybe even more favorite, the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, which was the most complicated spacewalk we've ever attempted. And uh, Mike Good and I were outside for that. And of course, our whole crew and our team participated. And we worked for years to figure out how to take this instrument apart and replace its power supply. Because the way we generally did things on Hubble up to that point, up to the, there were five servicing missions. I was on the final two. But up to the final one, it, it pretty much was taking things out and putting other stuff in, putting new stuff in. But on that last flight, we didn't have replacements for everything and some things weren't working. So we had to take two instruments apart. And one of them was this 
space telescope imaging spectrograph. They were never intended to be taken apart when they were launched in space. So we had to develop a lot of new tools and procedures. And it was a, a lot of uh, things that were challenging. And I made a really bad mistake during one of those, spe but we were able to recover from that. So it was this long drawn out process to get that thing fixed and it worked. Yeah. And the first image that came out of it was just like a point of light, it looked like a light bulb somewhere far, far away. That's what it looked like. It was just like just a God. light. Yeah. It's just like, you know, like you're looking at just a hazy light out in the distance out there in the universe. And I was really happy. That's my other favorite. So I'm curious about what you think about the future of Hubble. Hubble's been out there for a few decades, mm -hmm. 30 years, and fingers crossed, eventually, <laughs> the James Webb Space Telescope mm -hmm. will be, in a way, surpassing Hubble. And so I'm curious what you think about kind of the future of space observation mm -hmm. as we kind of progress technologically. Well, I'm, you know, Hubble is great, but it's a lot better than, it's a lot better than what we've had in the past. and. And hopefully we're going to have a lot, a lot of things that are much better in the future. Um, we flew on my, on my second flight. It was, uh, I think it was the 400th anniversary of Galileo making his observations. And we had a replica of his telescope on board. So that was kind of cool because we had like the state of the art space telescope in the payload bay. And we had the, the telescope that kind of started the whole study of astronomy with us. You couldn't see a thing out of that. I don't know how he came up with what he came up with with that. But it was just, you know, how do you, you know, we were looking through the, you know, through the window of stars and stuff. You can kind of see stuff, but man, how did he do that? You know, we've come a long way. And I think that maybe someday something like Hubble will seem that way to whoever it is 400 years from now. But as long as Hubble's working, it's going to be used. Um, just like having Hubble didn't close down all the observing instruments uh, on the ground. We still, we still use them. As long as, as long as it's working, it's going to be used. And hopefully James Webb, as you say, will get up there fairly soon. And uh, that'll be working great and surpass a lot of the discoveries that Hubble was able to make, increase the discovery potential that we have there. But so, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of really smart astronomers that want to learn things. And there's many more proposals that can be, that are great, that then those, that can be accommodated. So the more resources we have, the more observing opportunities we have, the better off we're going to be. Definitely.